welcome to the Metal Voice. And I think for the first time, Kissologist or Geekologist or Geek Kissologist, the one and only Michael Brandvold. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've been on your show. I know we've tried to do it a few times in the past and it hasn't worked, but yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. And here we go. We're talking today about Ace Frehley's new solo album, 10,000 Volts, going to be released February 23rd in, of course, 2024, produced by Ace and Trickster's own Steve Brown. So what we could do here, Michael, is we can go through each track very quickly and then give an overall perspective and compare it to what he's done in the past. Just give me 30 seconds of your initial feelings when you first put it, put it on. All right. So my initial feelings, I didn't have the whole album yet. So initially, I only heard the first two singles like everybody else. And I was very underwhelmed by the first two singles. Like, okay, typical Ace Frehley. It ain't bad. It ain't great. But it ain't going to get spun over and over again. Um, about a week, week and a half ago, I got the whole album. Completely different attitude about it now okay. i still think the same about those first two songs okay <laughs> this, this this album after listening to the whole album um the right now as it sits for me the best album he's released since the fraley's comet debut wow um definitely not better than his 78 solo album i've told people it's like you can't you can't better that 78 solo album that's about perfection for apes you know what? Um, i would agree with you it, the same sort of argument or actually the same sort of statement saying that this is a one of his best albums as a solo artist but it does not beat that original 78 album yeah yeah a hundred percent you you can't I, cause, and the only reason i say that is early on i think ace made a comment of like oh this is as good as my 78 solo album and, and I'm just like the bullshit. Hadn't even heard it. I'm like just bullshit. Any anytime any artist, and you and I had a side chat on this, comes out to promote a new album and says it's as great as and insert the definitive classic album by that band, whoever it is. I'll use Kiss as an example. This is going to be as good as Destroyer. Bullshit. Never. You will but, never. But you could also like you could also argue that because they're in the moment and they're excited about it and they play Destroyer a thousand times, that because it's so exciting for them, this new material, it feels like it's better than it, it, it definitely I, I can get where they're coming from. I mean, at the same time, I tell people, listen, I do marketing of bands, so I know what they're doing. I'm like, yeah, no artist is gonna come out and go. This oh, works. this is about our fourth best album we've ever done, our fifth best album. No, they're never going to say that. They're always going to say the new album is the best they've ever done. It's the best in the last decade. Whatever it is, I get it. That's marketing. That's hype. Now, as a fan, I am telling you, this new Ace Frehley album is the best thing he's released since the Fraley's Comet debut. The Fraley's Comet debut, I absolutely love. I think it's a, a, a great album. And this blows everything away since then. I've had people who are like, yeah, but Trouble Walking is so good. And just to refresh my memory, I re-listened to Trouble Walking yesterday. I'm like, no, no, it's, it's not, not. Be not, not better. Uh, but than I, I, I would say, though, I think this is better than the first Feelys Comet album. That's just me because it's Ace that's, singing every song. Because no, Ace no, is that, singing that, every that, song. That, that's, that's fair. You know, Fraley's Comet is a different beast. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's a, it's a band with Ace Fraley in it. As we know, Todd Howarth did a lot of singing and songwriting. Um, and I and I absolutely love that. I mean, I have I have always had a problem with Ace Fraley's lead vocals. I can only take small bits of his lead vocal singing. Give me a couple songs. That's fine. The whole album, I'm just like, oh, my God. It just starts to sound like one song runs into the other. And, and it's just because, listen, 
Ace Frehley, in my opinion, is not a lead singer. He's a lead guitarist. He can sing. He's not a lead singer. And, you know, you could have a whole debate on what the difference is between those two. Um, but he's not a lead singer. He's He's got a unique style. And it's just not a great style. I've always said, Ace, I fell in love with you because of your guitar playing. That's what I fell in love with. Would your you say, solos. Would you say this is a fair statement? This album is more melody driven versus yes. more guitar driven. Yes. Because his, his, his 78 album was more of a guitar driven album. And so was his other solo albums. But this one is more a melody driven album. Album. This this is this is a more yeah this is a more melodic this has got more you know some people are going to go oh my god I hate what what you're saying this has got more of a an eighties feel to it, it does, and it does. you you could immediately sit here and go Steve Brown trickster yeah. and I'm not saying that in a bad way because no. I think Steve did a phenomenal job on this the production agreed, agreed. is beautiful crystal clear sharp better than anything in the last decade that ace has done ace's guitars sound great on this new album better than what i've ever heard for decades from him so yes it is it is a more melody driven it's got more i don't know it's just got more hooks to it, it it's more of what i like as a music fan personally Okay. And it's a diverse album too. It's 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 got a little bit of everything. It's got a little bit of a hard rock and track. It's got more of an anthem arena rock song like the eighties. Then it has maybe a ballad. So there's a lot of diversity in this album. Yes. Um, you know, I would say that yeah. too. Okay, let's let's go through the tracks really fast. We're not gonna sure. spend a lot of time on them. Ten thousand volts you didn't like. Or you didn't yeah, you weren't I, as satisfied. You weren't as satisfied. Well, and, and and I'm looking at my notes that I made from a week two weeks ago on my first pass through and I kind of just like do a brain dump, real one sentence brain dump. 10,000 volts, I basically wrote down one and done, listen, feels like I was in space, what, oh, come on. You know, and, and what that leads to is, I would be so happy if Ace Frehley never wrote another song about going into space, being in space, <laughs> about outer space. One but, song is fine, an entire album, a half an album. But this is being electrocuted too. There's a little bit of yeah, electrocuted. No, well, I, I will throw in there anything about space and electricity. I'm over that. As a fan of Ace since 1978 solo album, I'm over it. I don't need that. That feels to me stupid and cliche. It's an easy go to. Oh, hey, I'm going to write another song about being in space. Come on, Ace. I know you got more in there than that. And this, uh, there's a track later on this album. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to proves that. Proves it. Proves <laughs> he can write great okay. music without that. For, for me, my notes were girls, electricity, super groovy and catchy Ace at his best. To me, this song, I love the little lead he has. I love the groove. I love the groove. I love this song, by the way. This, to me, was a, a true highlight, and it was a great way to start off. It was as a first single. So I did like it. I do like his guitar work. It's not heavy on the rhythm. It's not like, like I was listening to his older albums and I go, you know what? There's the guitars are more higher in the mix where in this, on this album, the guitar is a little lower and the melody is more forward. So I love this track. So I just. Yeah. You know. and, and, and keep in mind, I have, I think his guitars sound great in the album. His vocals are, are bearable. You know, that's the best <laughs> I can do. Um, the production is great. It's just like, Jesus Christ, another song about space and electricity. That that that's all, that is an immediate just like, and, and it's probably not fair, but that just when I hit that part of a vocal or a lyrics, I'm just like, oh, that's that's like Kiss saying, all right, the drummer's got to sing a ballad on our next album. Why? Just because all right. your drummer did Beth, you've got to have the drummer always sing the slow song that's stupid yeah all right we'll go to the next song walking on the moon which was the second single yep. you know I, I i thought of this as quirky mid-paced still very very melodic i dug it i know a lot of my friends did not dig this song they found it kind of boring 
but I, I thought it was it, walking on the moon. Okay, we got a little bit more of space happening, right? It's in space. It's in outer space. He's walking on the moon. It's not the police. It's Ace. I still like the song. I, I can listen to it over and over again, and it's enjoyable for me. I, I think 10,000 volts is better than walking on the moon, and you now know what I just thought of 10,000 volts. Walking on the moon, again, I wrote down just typical of Ye Ace yawn. Um, it, it, it's, it's just an okay. And, and honestly, I'm going to say, cause these were the first two songs in the album are the first two singles. And I would have never, if I was involled with this, I would have never voted for either of these to be the first wow. two singles. I, I, I'm halfway there. I would have put 10,000 volts as a lead track, as a lead single, but I wouldn't have put walking on the moon. I, I still like the song. I still think it's cool but I would not have put it into the second single. And we'll get into that second and, single. And, and I, I want to add real quickly, the video for Walking on the Moon was just like, oh my God, what? It, it, it was, it started out cool where it was like, okay, again, he's in a space suit. He's on the moon. I'm like, okay, I get it. An alien gives him a guitar. I'm like, it's kind of cool. You know, Ace is getting a guitar from an alien. But then the whole song, there's, there's two aliens in really stupid alien costumes playing blow up guitars behind them. And I'm just like, Oh my God, this is just so bad that I can't stop laughing for bad reasons. But you're a geek like me. I like space. So I, oh, I, like, absolutely, I, I, like... I absolutely love it. I'm <laughs> a huge geek on NASA and all this stuff. It's just, again, I'm just like, it's the go-to that you don't like that go-to. It's, go -to, it's, that it's easy the go-to. Go it, it feels like it. you didn't have to put any work into it. It's just gotcha. like go-to. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's, let's go to Cosmic Heart. Now, to me, this is arena rock. When you said 80s, this is arena rock song. When you think of, I don't know, Night Ranger, when you think of uh, Bon Jovi, you know, this is a big song that you play in the arenas. This song would... It's a song, song you would play it at the M3 Festival. That's what I'm yep. getting at. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Cosmic Heart, I wrote, yes, more of this. Now, okay, before somebody says, but isn't Cosmic Heart maybe a space song? It could be, <laughs> but it's not as blatant as Walking on the Moon. It's not as blatant as 10,000 Volts. I absolutely loved the opening of the song. It's crunchy. It's heavy. It's loud. Um, this is Cosmic Heart is one of my top three songs off of the album. It should have, I would have taken Cosmic Heart as a single over the first two tracks. Yeah. Trouble Walking. I think of Trouble Walking, that vibe. It, it gives you more of that 80s, a glossy, uh, that kind of vibe I'm getting on the song. But, but this is even, in my opinion, because I just listened to Trouble Walking, this is more more gloss more okay, yeah, yeah. More I, I, agree. I would agree with that too i would agree with that too i would agree with that too all right i i gave it high marks cosmic card cherry medicine cherry medicine what'd you think all right this is this is uh this song there's a lot a of grower. nods here there's a lot of this, nods this, here. This, this is a grower so, yeah so here's the first thing i wrote and and you've got to know what um Fraley's Comet debut album. You got to be able to go back to that. This immediately reminded me of Dolls. Yes, of yes, Fraley's I agree. Comet. I agree. Yes, yes. Dolls is one of my absolute favorite songs, but it Good is song. the strangest song, the one that you're going, what the hell is this doing here? But I go, this reminds me of Dolls, sort of what the fuck is this I'm listening to? But at the same time, the quirkiness of it grabs me. Um, so Cherry Medicine, it's one of those things where, you know, again, the song's playing. I don't have lyrics. I don't know anything. And I'm like, what the, f what the hell are we singing about Cherry Medicine for? And then all of a sudden it's like, but you look better in your black leather. And I'm there like, you go. <laughs> what the, what, what, how do you go from, is, is Cherry, and, and I'm assuming a lot of these songs about women are about Ace's girlfriend, Laura. And that's fine. Yes. That's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. That's so, fine. I don't know, is Cherry Medicine a fun nickname he's got for her? Is that an inside joke they've got? This is 
again, in my top three songs. This is probably my Same. number two favorite song. As quirky, as strange, as weird as it is, it it's like an earworm. It's just growing in me. It's just like, God, I can't stop listening to it. To me, summertime, you got the, you know, the the your your you got the breeze, you got the sun shining, you're driving your car, you turn on the radio, and this song is playing. It's, you know, there's got the harmonies, it's a big, juicy chorus. Um, and there is a nod to a shock me in the black leather. You know, there he's gotta put that in, he's gotta gotta yep. go to the black leather, right? So you make me feel better when you're in your black leather. Shock me. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 exactly. It's I'm, I'm listening to that again. I'm just like, don't know what these lyrics are about, what he's writing about. This is strange. This is quirky. It's also hook filled. It's grabbing me. And then I'm like, is this up there with burn, bitch, burn? Let me put my log in your fireplace for the quality of lyrics. I mean, it. listen, throughout this whole thing, Ace Fraley is not a lyrical genius and i'm not saying that to put him down he just writes decent good rock and roll lyrics it's not deep meaning cherry medicine is you you can't sit here and go what the hell is the freaking meaning of but you know what that melody will stick in your head again, all day long this is again my number two as of right now my number two favorite song that i keep playing over and over is cherry medicine and and you know Steve Brown did bring a little trickster into into his songwriting, right? And that's yep. the melodic '80s arena rock sound. Yes. So hats off to Steve Brown for that. Um, I would like also add that in, in it's be, his voice is very quirky, Ace, and I'm not sure if it's auto tuned or it's actually the way he's phrasing stuff. I'm just listening really carefully. Are they fixing his vocals? Are they or is it just his vo- voice? At the end of the day, I, you know, I think it's some of all of that I've heard. And listen, I'm no, I'm no production expert. I've read many comments where people are like, "Yeah, there's a lot of auto tune going on throughout this album." I'm like, I, I, again, I don't. Maybe that's his voice. Maybe that's just his at, voice. At the end of the day, I don't care because if the song is good, the song is good. That's what Agreed. matters at the end of the day. What they had to do to get to a great song, I don't care. Yes, Ace's voice isn't beautiful from the beginning. He's just never been a beautiful singer. He's got a very unique, almost speaking style of singing. And again, I personally, and this is, again, me, because as we know, music is all personal. My ears can only take so much of that before they start going oh my god this is this is this is exhausting to listen to over and over and it causes all the songs at some point to start running into sounding the same because he's got he's got the same vocals throughout everything there's no variety in his vocal ability but but I will say on this album you could tell that they worked hard on the vocal lines to mm-hmm. make sure that the choruses are super catchy, you know, syrupy in a way, right? Yep. And people are walking away saying, you know what? I it's stuck in my head that melody. It's just like a TV jingle, right? It's it's yep. just they work and, really hard on and that. I, and I and I credit Steve big time for this because yeah. he's he is what's different on this album than all the previous Ace albums over the last decade. And we know Steve's background with Trickster. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a melodic person. That's who he is. I've got no problems. I'm like, that's great. I'm actually glad because it made this a very good album for me the first time in a long time. For you know, and, and, and for all those Ace fans who love his guitar work, you're still getting that. Yes. You're getting the string bending and those repetitive phrasing on his guitar work. You're still getting that, but it's more in little, little amounts versus uh, if you listen, if you, if you listen to his first solo album, it's more guitar driven. Like I said at the beginning where this is sort of pulled back a little bit and it's placed. Every note is carefully placed. That's what I want to say. Yeah. And, yep. and it works and it works back into my arms again. This is a let's, let's, let's make up and get back together song. Yeah, this song, um, first time through, I was just like, 
let me see if I wrote something down for that one. No, I didn't get to a note on that, but I do remember. I was just like, eh, okay, whatever. But this has really grown on me. me too. This, 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 this is a definitive '80s era rock song. Yeah, power. You could call it a power ballad. Yeah, I don't necessarily see it as a ballad, but it is a bit more ballad D than the other songs. Power um, slow I song. Believe, Power slow I, song. We'll call yeah, it. Yeah, I believe this is an old demo of Aces. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, this could have originally come from the eighties. I don't know. Um, this is growing on me. This is growing on me really good. Back back in my arms again. I'm I'm liking it. Same here. Everything you said. It's a great again. Back to the car driving in the summer eighties feel. Yes, it has that. It's not a ballad, but it is a slow song. Yeah, and it's got a nice message. It's got a general message that everybody can relate to. It yep. feels good. It feels good. Yep. All right, fighting for my life. Here Whoa. you go. This and, this is and a great you probably you've probably seen this. I made yes. a post yes. uh, last week that basically said, "Yeah, fighting for life." What's fighting for life? Fighting, fighting for, for life. life. That's it. Sorry. Fighting, fighting for, for life. life. Sorry. Sorry. This is without question the best song on this album by far. It is the best song Ace has released since going back to Fraley's Comet. Agreed. Uh, I wrote down, love everything about it. This should have been the lead off single. This is the song. So here, as, as a fan, here's kind of how I judge whether I like an album. I'll listen to it through the first time. And if when I'm done, I'm like, boy, I got to go back and listen again. I, I can't wait to hear that again. Or maybe I'm busy and I can't listen again. But while I'm having dinner or in bed, I'm like, God, I can't wait until tomorrow morning when I'm yes. going to have an hour to sit down and hit the play button again. That is this song. I cannot, I can't play Fighting for Life enough this is everything i love this is this is at least apparently is not about space is not about electricity um this has this is a heavier feel song to it it's got great guitars i can't say anything bad about this i hope they put the spotlight on this song at some point you know what it has the gang nod right? The Ace Freely Ducky Gang Nod. And I love it because it's got that up-tempo groove and it fits well. This is more of a guitar-driven song versus what I said about melody-driven. Yep. This could have been on Freely's Comet. This could have even been on maybe a Kiss album, maybe on Dynasty. It, 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 yes, this is that good of a song. That's right. For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, you know, if this was what they would have modeled an entire album off of, Holy crap, I would have been happy for that. So, again, fighting for life without question, the absolute far and away best song off of this new album for me. Yep, I agree. Blinded. Now, Blinded. We're, going into, now we're going into another lyrical topic. Yeah, it's is, is kind of not really, it doesn't really go there. Computers, um, science. Here's, here's, Blinded here's by what, here's, science. Here's what, here's what here's what I wrote. I prefer blinded by science. <laughs> um, I'm just like okay. the lyrics are rough. The lyrics the, are rough. The lyrics are rough. It's it's not terrible. No. It's I'm not I'm not look when I'm playing this album from start to finish. I'm not looking forward to the song coming up to be played again. Um, I'm just like, uh, okay, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, it, it it's just okay. Look, great. the melody is great. The music's great. It's just the lyrics sort of, it veers off into sort of, I wouldn't say childish, but it, there's a way to express yourself with lyrics that it doesn't come across as cheesy. Well, this comes across as cheesy. The topic's okay. You can talk about science as being blinded by science. Thomas Dolby did, right? Yeah. But this, it's just how you come across. I don't hate the song. I think it's okay. I'm like you. Like if, if it's playing, I'll listen to it. I won't skip to the next song. 
It's okay. And, and you know, and, and part of what I get from the lyrics of this is like, this doesn't seem like Ace to me. Ace is a technical geek. He loves technology. He That's loves right. computers. I mean, he's all about that sort of stuff. So it's like, why? He created this, apparently. You know, this whole uh, triangle thing here. Remember this? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, okay. He created all this. He was like, I mean, he may, did all may, the graphics for this and this, whatever the heck this is. May, maybe sort of Ace has had a change of heart as he's gotten older about technology, and that's fine, and people do that. But the Ace I'd grown up and the Ace I knew, I mean, I remember when I was working with Kiss back around the farewell tour, I went to Ace's apartment in Hollywood and he had this, he had computers all over the place and he was dismantling them and he was rigging them the way he wanted and hot wire. I mean, he knew computers. I had, I even had a, a dinner meeting with him where I took one of the guys that I knew from Apple computer out to dinner with Ace. So Ace could meet, guys from some guys from Apple. That's, that's Ace. He loves technology. So I'm sort of like, okay, is this why why are you blinded by science all of a sudden? He might have used the wrong word because I think it's technology overstepping, you know, like security cameras everywhere. Yes. And yes. I think that's what he meant, you know, but maybe it didn't come across that way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm like you. It's not a bad track. It's okay. Not bad. It's just I'm not looking forward to it. All right. Let's talk about Constantly Q. I just wrote Ugh. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, it's probably another song about his girlfriend. And again, you're welcome to write about your girlfriend all you want. As a musician, you write about what's important and influencing your life. Constantly Cute sounds just so cheap, so simple, so cringe. Kind of, yeah. It's just like this, this uh, I don't know, is constantly cute. Should this be by tough? Should this have been by poison? I, I don't know. I would agree. I, 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 my statement was I would have left this one off the album. And I don't, I think the problem is not the music. It's not the melody. It's not the guitar work. It's just the lyrics. It's just, it's too yeah, simple. It's it's too simplistic. And, and again, I don't think Ace is, I don't see Ace as a deep lyrical, deep meaning type of person. Um, but at the same time, you know, yeah, the role of the producer might be, dude, this song, you got to do something. It's too simple. It's too stupid. It's too cliche. It's too. Can we can we resurrect the hook or the melody and change the lyric? I don't know. They could have um, made this into a great song. That's my point. They could have yeah. taken the lyrics, put something else there, and it could have still been a great song. Yeah, I mean, th th this is one of the songs where it's like it just illustrates to me because again, you know, when Ace doing all of his PR for this, he's like, oh. Gene and Paul are going to be embarrassed when this is released. I'm like, of what? Embarrassed of what? The cheesy lyrics? I mean, now granted, yes, Kiss has had their share. Well, well, let's not go there. Let's lyrics. not go there. <laughs> let's. Yeah, I'm the first to admit that, but I'm just like, so you're saying your lyrics, like constantly cute, are going to make Gene and Paul go, holy shit, he hit something we could have never done? I'm like, come on. Gene Simmons, in his worst, can crap out lyrics like this. And he has on the Kiss albums. Again, he Gene's, has. Gene's probably one of the better lyricists in Kiss, in the Kiss family. He's if, always if, been. If, if, yeah. if Gene puts effort into it, he can write some incredible songs. That's right. The point being, like, during the 80s, especially when he was chucked out of the band, he was just crapping out lyrics. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he just woke up in the morning and was like, crap, I got to get Paul two songs for today in the studio yeah, yeah. and he just sat down and belched out burn bitch burn you know yeah yeah, yeah. He, he, but he can write if he puts his mind to it yep. gene can write and so can ace and if ace puts his mind to it he can write as well maybe not as well as gene but he can all right next one life of a stranger now this is a little weird because it was written by fairs nadia it's a, mina it's Monique. a cover song it's a cover song i'm i wasn't sure if it was a cover song 
or if it was a song written for Ace. No, I'm pretty sure it's a cover song. Okay. Um, and and that alone, Ace has gotten into such a bad habit through his career of throwing cover songs and making, at least here they didn't lead with the cover song or make the cover song a yes. single like they've done so many times in the past. But there is enough good stuff on this album, actually. I feel like, here, look back. I feel like as an artist, if you've got to go to a cover song, that usually means you don't have enough material. You don't have enough original material that you got to go to a cover. He's had a cover song or so a song written for him basically on every single album. Every I every like single that. album. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, but again, this album, there's plenty of good to great stuff on here that it yeah. didn't need a cover song on here. And I can only imagine, you know, there had to have been other material that didn't make the album. I would have rather heard one more a song, even at the level of constantly cute, rather than a cover. Well, what? Song. Okay, so let's take the song for what it is. Did you enjoy it or not? It, yeah, it was. It was. It was good. It was good. But yeah. again, it's not going to be the song I'm going to go saying. Can't wait for that to come up in in the in Spotify as I'm playing this or wherever I'm listening. It, that's not going to be it. It's just going to be like this okay, is a, here more, it is. Yeah, yeah, song. yeah. This is more of a slow bluesier track, which is he's out of the box a little bit, Ace. Yeah, and I and I do like that. And I didn't even realize it was a cover song until I actually read the liner notes. So it is a cover song, or it's written for him, or it was an older song. I've never heard the original. It's not bad. It's a nice bluesier bluesy track that I think people will still enjoy, regardless if it was cover or not. I I will give him this. If you're going to do a cover song, do a cover song that your listeners go, I didn't know that was a cover song. That was me. That was me. I didn't know it was a cover exactly song. That's exactly it. That, yeah, as yeah. opposed to when he's done Do Ya from ELO or That's Fox right. on the Run, your fans are going to go, I instantly know that song. And now they're going to instantly be judging your song against exactly. the original. Exactly. If, if they listen to this and they go, I didn't know this was a cover song. Great. That's what you should do. That's the way it should be. All right. Up in the sky. All right. <laughs> We're going back to space. But yep. I have to say, this is one of the songs that you said you look forward to. I look forward to this song. Even though it's about space, even though the, the theme is a go-to, I just love this. It's like I'm being transitioned or I'm going into a time warp at a time of Freely's Comment or his first solo album or even Kiss to, to a certain degree. I love this song. I love everything about it. You know, I don't I don't love it that much. It's 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 a good song. It's it's a decent song. I enjoy it. Um yeah, it's just a good song. I've got no problems with it. I mean, I didn't write anything bad, but I also didn't write anything praising it as being so incredibly amazing. Um there there really isn't a song on here that I have to like skip as soon as it starts playing. Okay. That's a good thing. So, that's a good thing. Yeah. That, that, that to me, that's a really good thing about this album because his past recent albums, you know, not considering his covers albums, you know, they've been hit or miss, you know, I agree. hit or miss dramatically of like, all right, there's one okay song and the rest of them I, are just unmemorable. This album doesn't have that at all. This is a very memorable album that, yeah, there might be songs that I'm not as looking forward to listening, but I'm also not sitting here going, delete, get it out of my, I don't want it in my library. I can't listen to that again. It's, it's just bad. None of that exists here. Michael, I will say this. I have a lot of albums to listen to because I review a lot of stuff. This is one of the albums out of all the 10 albums that I'm reviewing that I always want to listen to. Like I always want to go to. I go, I don't want to listen to this new album, but I want to listen to Aces. There's yep. something, there's something that that I, I feel like grabbing it. I feel like listening to it. I feel like playing it. I, it. It makes me happy. It's it's melodic, it's simple, it's 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 
it's it's a great album. I, yeah, I I feel the same way. I, it's like every day since I've had this, I'm like, yeah, I want to listen to this that's album. That's right. Again. You're excited and, to go to it, and I haven't had that with an Ace album in I don't know how many decades. I agree. How many yeah. decades that I'm just like I want to go back and play it again, and it's not just I want to play this one track. I want to play the whole album, starting with the very first single, going all the way to the end. I am looking forward to playing this album over and over. And I haven't had that experience with Ace for so long. And part of why that ex that that's kind of what really excites me about this album, too, is it was like, wow, I love it when an artist of Ace's genre age however you want to word it releases an album and totally surprises you out of the blue that it's like jesus christ you guys are 70 years old and you you've been recording music for 50 years and you just released an album that surprised the crap out of me and makes me feel excited like the first time i got fraley's comet yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah. That as a music fan, that's pretty freaking cool when an artist can do that because you, you probably know even more than I do because you listen to even more stuff. There's a lot of artists where you're just like, oh, okay, you did another album next. How's this? I don't have to force myself to listen to this album to review it. Yeah. I want to listen to this album to review it. Where yep. other artists that are releasing new music, I got to force myself. And once... I do the review. I'll never listen to that album again. That's exactly it. You'll never hit the play on it again. You know, Space Invader, Anomaly, whatever, those up. I, I have never gone back and hit never the play on I have. I yeah. find absolutely no desire, interest, or curiosity to go back and hit play on those albums because they just never hooked me. All right, last song, of course, the traditional instrumental at the end yep. of the album called Stratosphere, which I thought it was it was a pretty decent multi-guitar instrumental, right? It just it's a, it's, it's a beautiful instrumental. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, again, listen, it's 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 fractured mirror 12, right. however many <laughs> he's ever done. He's just not calling it fractured mirror. It's the last track on an ace solo album is gonna be. A beautiful instrumental, which he started back in '78 with "Fractured Mirror." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it 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 does he need to do it? I don't think so. Um, it's a beautiful instrumental. Uh, you know, it's 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 not a track that I'm sitting here going, I can't wait for Stratosphere to come up and so I can hear it. Um, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful easy listening instrumental yeah. i agree on that note any last final remarks on ace's album i think we said pretty much everything I, you know last remarks is you definitely gotta i mean if you're an ace fraley ace fraley fan or a kiss fan you will want this album and i'm saying that as a ace fraley and kiss fan and as i've said in this review i haven't always loved everything he's done um, I totally love the fact that he hasn't stopped recording. That to me, that's that's a huge plus to Ace. Whether I've always liked, whether I've liked it or not, the fact that he will keep recording music is important. And and I think you've got to do what you need to do to support the artists you love. I will say this as a caveat on the side. I don't like all the BS that's been going on with his PR to promote this album. I, you know, but the, kiss drama, right? You got to have kiss drama. Well, it's, it's kiss drama. I've seen other artists do this too. It's like the easy technique to get. And again, I'm putting on my marketing hat, the easy technique to get media attention and hits is to push hot buttons and start feuds and fights and say things and all that other stuff. And sure, that'll gonna get that's gonna get you the headlines and that's gonna get you an article. But most of the time, they're not talking about your music. They're talking about what you just said about 
your bandmates, your ex-bandmates, other bands that you're talking about. It, it's not needed, especially in the case of this album, because the music actually is so damn good that Ace himself said, I just want the music to do the talking. All right, Ace, let your music do the talking. Shut up. Stop saying that stuff to cause to get headlines because that's all it's doing. And that to me, again, whether whether it's Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, Kiss, D. Snyder, we've all seen it. They're all amazing at saying something to get a headline. On that note, the, tell us about day, your podcast. Tell us about your Kiss podcast that discusses all this drama of Kiss, all the so, music of Kiss, and all the happenings of Kiss. Three, three sides of the coin. It's Kiss podcast. It's been around for this year. It's going to be 12 years that we've hey. been doing it every Us, it's week. 13 years, by the way. Us, it's 13 wow. years. Yeah, it's it's, I mean, I'm sure you're the same. It's like, I can't believe it. We've been doing it this long. Is there, you know, is there enough? I had stuff more hair. Stuff? I had more hair. And I had more hair when I started. Yeah. I mean, um, every week we find something to talk about on three sides of the coin. Uh, whether it's our memories, whether we have amazing guests, we do have a guest coming up later this month where we've got um, Joey Casada and Steve Brown coming on to talk about oh, good, good, the good. album. So Steve is going to talk about producing and Joey played drums on a few tracks on this album. Um, we're just, we're three, four, depends on how many hosts we have on any given episode. We're just a bunch of geeky kiss fans like everybody else that, you know, when you get together with your buddies who you're kiss fans with, what do you talk about? That's what we do on the podcast. We just hit our record button and then put it out there for everybody to listen to. And, you know, I think one thing that we pride ourselves on is we are always honest with what we say. And what I mean by that is it, our show is all opinion, just like we just did here. Yeah. It's our opinions about what we think of Ace Fraley or Gene or Kiss or an album or whatever. Yeah. We're not saying that that opinion is the right opinion. It's just right for, for me as I'm speaking at that moment. That's my opinion. And I will never, I will, I or the show will never give you a false opinion just to appease and get some attention. We say things that we like and you know, it gets a lot of people who hate us. It, you know, I'm sure there's probably been musicians who don't like what we say. We don't care. I mean, we're music fans. Every music fan mm -hmm. has a different, unique opinion about all music. There's nothing, there's nobody who can sit here and go, I am the right and I know what's wrong about music. Because there is no right or wrong. Yep. Yeah, I agree Nothing. with you. Yeah, well, happy 12th anniversary. Us, it's actually going to be on the, in three days, will be 13 years. And we're the Congrats same way. You. We just say what we want to say. We interview who we want to interview. And we just have fun at the end of the day because that's what it's about. Yeah, you just, you just want to share what you love. Yeah. And you hope other people exactly. enjoy that as well. If they don't, it's no big deal. But, but, I, but, but I think from your success and our success, it's it's our honesty at the end of the day and it's our, our passion at the end of the yep. day. And people could feel that. People who watch yes. could feel it. You have to be honest. You have to not be afraid to say what you think. I know there's a lot of people getting into podcasting who are new or, you know, they're trying to figure it out. And, you know, they're like, well, I've got to be careful what I say. I don't want to piss people off. I... No, you need to say what you want to say. You need to stand behind it. You need to believe it. Whether everybody comes down on you or not, doesn't matter. Be honest about what you like. Okay, here's the thing. I think you would agree. As a music fan of a band, maybe a diehard fan, you don't have to love everything. No. Nope. You are allowed to not like 
things that your absolute favorite band has done, especially when that band has been around for 50 years, there's going to be a few, there's going to be a few duds, a few misses in there. Of course. And you, you're, nobody's expecting you to sit, you know, it's like in the kiss world, nobody's expecting you to praise and love carnival of souls for being the most amazing best kiss album ever. If you love it, that's great. But you don't have to love it. Yeah. That's what it comes down to, to being a music fan. Just talk about what you like and don't be afraid to say what you don't like. I always tell people who are starting off, just be you. There's only one you. Be you. Don't be someone else. Just be you and just work yeah. with that. Don't, yeah. don't, don't get influenced by social media, by your listeners, by the comments, by publicists, by any of that stuff. Don't let any of that stuff sway your opinions and feelings. Because honestly, at the end of the day, I think more artists will appreciate honesty than yes men. Yeah, I agree. I agree. On that note, pick up Ace Freely's 10,000 Volts. We're both giving it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. This is a great album. Great Michael, album. Michael, a pleasure having you. Uh, you know, hope to have you again. And uh, we will talk soon, my friend. All right. It's been a pleasure, Jimmy. Oh,